But who will take home the NBA's MVP award? Let's check out the candidates. SGA, Shea Gilgis Alexander and the Thunder hosting the Spurs. One minute left in the first. Oh my gosh, spin cycle. Shea. I mean, he just makes it look so easy. I mean, you, when you look at him, he actually has the second slowest pace on the team because it, it seems like he's playing fast, but he's so in control. He's it's like true. He's in the Matrix. Legs, what do you love about Shea's season so far? I love the fact that nobody controls the middle of the floor the way he does. Such yeah. a tough place to operate, but it's his favorite spot. He had 26 points, 5 assists, and 26 minutes as the Thunder go on to win. Let's check on Luka, the Don Doncic and the Mavs visiting the Heat. Now, Luka leading the league in points per game, Ramona. You know, I think in any other year, he would probably win the MVP with the way Dallas has played in the second half of this season. But this is Nikola Jokic's award to win, and the <laughs> only question is whether or not it's going to be unanimous this year. Legs, the Mavs are 15-2 and two since March 7th. Do you think Luka's really making a push? Uh, there's no doubt he's just going to run out of time. If he had 10 more games, he might be able to run uh, Jokic down. <laughs> ooh, ooh, Mavs win 114-108. And speaking of Jokic, Nuggets hosting the T-Wolves. I mean, Jokic had 41, 11, and 7 in this game. This was a battle for the one seed. And if he, he had a gavel, it, the judge would bang it and say, case closed. I mean, after this game, this was just vintage Jokic, 41, 15, completely controlled the game. And he's actually having a pretty good defensive season this year. We just saw Harrison Wynn, who covers the Nuggets for, for D DNVR, posted something. They have the eighth best defense. And here's Jokic. having the best sense season. To be honest, I think they, they don't even care anymore uh, because I'm – like I think it's the this whole the whole MEP conversation it's kind of getting out of their control. So I think I'm playing good basketball. Uh, the team is playing good ba basketball. If I win it, great. If I don't win it, congrats to the other guy. I think there is a lot of players playing really good basketball. So we knew how uh, special this year was going to be just based on our practices, what Luca was doing, showcasing that all the time, uh, really being more vocal, challenging his teammates, challenging me. Uh, and doing it in his own way. And I think that's a true sign of MVP. So many MVPs, but Jokic is now the overwhelming favorite to win MVP at ESPN bet at minus 5,000. The only other players on the board are Luka at 14 to 1 and SGA at 20 to 1. So, Tim, the odds are one thing, but they certainly are not everything. As the MVP race really comes to a close, can you run us through your top five MVP candidates, starting at number five, please? Yeah, and look, at number five, I'm going to go with Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, look, the bottom line is you can't deny the numbers, and they still are second in the West. I know it hasn't been the kind of season they were hoping for, but Giannis Antetokounmpo is still doing everything that he possibly can on a nightly basis to win games. So I would probably put Giannis at five. Number four, I'm going to go with Jalen Brunson. Ooh, he's going to he's going to he's going to get some votes, man. And I think what it comes down to is when you look at the injuries they've dealt with and just the load he has to carry every night at the point guard position for, from a scoring standpoint just to keep them in games. Really remarkable what Jalen Brunson's able to do. You can't get him off his game. I'm going to put him solidly at four. Number three, I'm going with Shea Gilgis Alexander. I know a lot of people think maybe he's going to get the two spot when the vote comes out, and he, he very well may. You can't deny what he's done. Look, he's the oldest guy in his starting lineup at 25. Crazy. He's, got a, he's got a bunch of kids around him, <laughs> and, and he is the one thing that's the constant every night. That 30 to 35, consistently dominating, creating spots for other guys, making the game easier. I put him at three. Number two is Luka. I just alluded to it. I'll say this. Nobody has had a better individual season than Luka Doncic. And nobody has ever generated more offense for their team than Luka Doncic has this year. So it's really remarkable what he's done. But again, winning matters a lot. And when you have a six-game gap, seven-game gap, whatever it ends up being between themselves and Denver, that to me is what ultimately breaks the tie because I think it's a virtual tie. And I'm going to go with the Joker getting his third MVP. The numbers are still there. The team success is still there. I don't even think this team was expecting to be the number one seed. Yet here you are looking up a couple games to go. They have a chance to have home court throughout the entire Western Conference playoffs. Um, you can't deny what, what Jokic does on a nightly basis. Those top two guys control the game unlike any other players in this league. And Tim Legler, we trust. Now, Ramona, I know you wrote an amazing piece earlier this week on SGA. Well, you know, Shea was traded from the Los Angeles Clippers to the Oklahoma City Thunder as part of that Paul George deal. And I asked the coach of the Thunder, Mark Dagnall, hey, did you guys know he was this good when you traded for him? He said, actually, no. Like, he just has built himself into this. And the secret to it really is that 
he just keeps getting better. I mean, this is a guy who didn't even make his high school team. Unbelievable that he's turned himself into this, and he's just getting started. And the thing that's crazy to me is that we typically know when the MVP is going to, like, oh, it's like two yeah. weeks out. We know who the MVP Like three games left, and we're still having conversations.